Whew, I've forgotten how to do this. Hi guys and welcome to a new Borid's World video. It's been a while since you've seen me, but I'm back with my September wrap-up. And I was going to say that this was a bad reading month because I only read four books, but then I saw on Goodreads that I also read four books in August and in July, so it was an average reading month, so welcome to my average reading wrap-up. So four books means a relatively short video, so yay for that. Uh, I'm going to go to my books in the order that I read them in September, and the first book that I read was Yay, Zechtet by Connie Palman. I started this at the beginning of September for my book club and finished it during my The First Atalm week, which wasn't really that much of a success. And uh, if I have to be honest, this was not really a book that belonged there because even though this was written by a Dutch author and, you know, Dutch authors aren't really that much spoken about on Booktube, this was about that Hughes and Sylvia Platt, two of the whitest people you could imagine. And, you know, just not a, a pick for Diversiton, but in general this was quite a fascinating read because, well, it's weird to read a book about two people that have existed in real life and just read a fictionalized version of it. In a way that the author, Connie Palman, uses all the facts that she could find and all the witnesses and all the transcripts and diaries that were kept, but she just fills in the blanks on her own. I have to say that I knew a bit about Sylvia Platt and Ted Hughes, but not a lot, so this was quite revelatory. Everybody knows that she killed herself by putting her head in the oven, but what went before that and the aftermath for Ted Hughes were completely unbeknownst to me. So even though this is a fictionalized version of their marriage and life, I learned quite a lot. Then the second book that I read was a short story collection by Roald Dahl, uh, Kiss Kiss. I read this because uh, Roald Dahl was born a hundred years ago, somewhere in September this year, and I thought it was the ideal excuse to finally read this uh, short story collection, which I bought on a whim several years ago while I was still at university. I have to say that I never read anything by Roald Dahl before, not even one of his children's books, which is quite blasphemous, I know. I always pictured Royal Doll as a children's author, but these stories are not for children. These all have a bit of a morbid side. And when you realize that this is from the same person that wrote Matilda, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, a lot of great short stories, one of which I told to a lot of people because I found it so clever and so morbid that yeah, I just couldn't shut up about it. Then the third book that I read was one that I read with Simon over at Savage Reads. I link her... <sighs> Sounded like a cow there. Sorry. Um, so the... <laughs> so the... Oh my god. So the third book that I read was one that I read with Simon over at Savage Reads. I'll link his channel down below for those of you who, d who don't know him yet. I can't speak anymore. And that was uh, Boy Erased by Jared Conley. This is about Jared Conley growing up in Arizona, I think, or one of those southern states. And he gradually realizes that he's gay, but he lives in a very um, Catholic Christian uh, environment. His father is a pastor and, you know, he goes to church every Sunday and he has a girlfriend who is also very religious. And this is about how religion can play such a role in someone's identity, uh, in, in accepting oneself, about how being gay can have such dire consequences for someone growing up in such an environment. And uh, yeah, I found this a really shocking memoir, really disturbing, especially the religion camp and the ex-gay conversion therapy uh, tries to brainwash people into believing that they're not gay about how they play the religion card to, 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 to try to convince them that their lifestyle is not one worth living and full of sin and yeah, it's, it's very different to the, the way uh, gay people in my environment have grown up, but it was a very fascinating read to see how it can be so different for other people. And talking about this with uh, Simon was very enlightening and very fascinating to have uh, discussions about this and how we relate to this topic. So this was a very fascinating buddy read and definitely worth repeating. So yeah, thanks for that, Simon. 
And then the fourth book that I read was one that I actually got from the library because, you know, my TBR isn't big enough as it is already, and that was uh, Mother Sunday by Graham Swift, and I was really charmed by this book. Uh, it's not that big, and it's about uh, a Sunday in 1924, somewhere in the English countryside, and it's about Mother Sunday, which was apparently a holiday that the serving staff got uh, one day in the year that they uh, had the chance to visit their mother, but uh, the main character in this book is called Jane Fairchild, I think, and she is an orphan, so she doesn't really have a mother or a father to go to, but it soon becomes clear that she has an affair with one of the sons at the neighboring estates, so she spends her uh, mothering Sunday with him while his family is uh, on a picnic or something. It's about, yeah, their relationship and how she sees herself in this class system that was still very much alive in the 1920s in England. And it's also about her reflecting back on her life uh, when she is way older. And yeah, like I said, a very heartwarming read, uh, very charming. Definitely recommend this one. So those were the four books that I read in September. And even though it were only four, it had uh, two five-star reads among them, which isn't all that bad, I must say. And maybe I'll read a bit more in October because I still got that good reach challenge of 52 I got to reach at the end of the year. And now I am off uh, to Brussels because I'm going to see Hanya Yanagahara this evening, which I'm very excited about, and I'll see you soon. Bye!